everyone! Welcome back to Art Historian and Happy Holidays! Today we are going to be talking about Gian Lorenzo Bernini, known today simply as Bernini. Born in 1598, in December in fact, in Naples, Italy, Bernini became a renowned architect, but the art world would remember him as a sculptor. Some would consider him a mannerist sculptor, but for the purposes of these videos in this timeline, we are going to group him with the Baroque artists. He is rumored to have completed his first art piece at age eight and was esteemed to be the Michelangelo of his age. And we are gonna find out why. First, we're gonna look at Apollo and Daphne. Apollo and Daphne was created in between 1622 and 1625 and is based off of a story from Ovid's Metamorphoses. Apollo is a god who falls in love with Daphne, a river nymph. As such, Daphne has pledged to the river goddess to remain a virgin for life. Apollo pursues her. She calls out to Diana, the river goddess, for help in protecting her virginity. And so that she can't be deflowered, Daphne is turned into a tree. And that transformation is exactly the moment that this sculpture is depicting. As you can see, her skin is starting to turn into bark and her hair is starting to turn into branches just blowing in the wind. And that is really what the Baroque artists were all about. In Renaissance works, the realism is definitely there, but it's kind of depicting this overarching story. They weren't necessarily showing you a specific moment frozen in time. But in Baroque works, we see a snapshot of an exact moment, the exact moment that Daphne is turning into a tree, displaying all the humanity, fault, and drama between characters. Very theatrical. That's not to mention the absolute mastery of marble that's depicted in this piece. We see marble turn into the skin of a human and the bark of a tree and the branches of a tree and the leaves of a tree. The piece gives the viewer a sense of movement, which is aided by the unique, up to this point in history, the unique way that Bernini reinforces the structure of the marble. So to keep it balanced and steady and to keep these kind of like thinner um, reaching pieces stable to the rest of the marble, usually one would just attach a large kind of like marble beam structuring that together. But Bernini does tons of little tiny ones that all interconnect. So the structure is no less stable. However, it is much more delicate and beautiful to look at. And so the next piece we are going to look at is David. Hopefully the context of the story of David and Goliath is familiar to you by now. If not, I have plenty of videos <laughs> discussing the story of David and Goliath. But keeping with this same story is a really great way to track what was important to different artists that we look at. So we can look at, at the way this representation evolves throughout history and evolves from artist to artist. As we can see, this David, which was created in between 1623 and 1624, is very different from the other Davids that we've talked about in previous videos. In this classic Bernini style, we see a lot of intensity coming out of this piece. This is not Michelangelo's David right before he slings the stone at Goliath, and it is not Donatello's David who is standing over his conquered foe. This is the exact moment when David is hurling the slingshot up to Goliath's face. So when I first learned about this piece in high school, my teacher had recently been in Italy in the Borghese Museum to see it and she had she said she wanted to be the only person in the room to view it. So as soon as the museum opened, she rushed to where this was. She had mapped it out and she's in awe of the way his calf looks and how it looks so much like a real calf but it's stone and she says that the next person to walk into the room 
ducked <laughs> as a reaction because he felt that he could sense something was being hurled at him from across the room. Which is just a testament to how realistic that this figure was. It, it's about average human height. It's life size. So it really gives you this and other Baroque pieces that we look at really give you a sense of being right in the action. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, get notifications, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.